Okay, C. Lindelof videos. I'm using my TI Inspire cast today. Uh, important, very important. I'm using this the cast, the CAS. It's really, really important. It's not all uh, calculators are made the same, and the cast does very specific things. I'm asking mine to evaluate the domain of composite functions. Please make sure that your calculator has operating system of 3.2 or greater to do this. Say it again. Make sure your calculator has an operating system of 3.2 or greater. Uh, I did a video on how to figure that out and also how to get free upgrades for your calculator. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. So this is what I want to do. Um, I just want to go back to my calculator for a second. I already saved a bunch of functions, so I'll just let you see them really quick. I saved f of x is this. Uh, I saved g of x is this. Uh, do I, have, I have h of x in there somewhere. h of x, h of x is this. So these are the functions that I already saved. I have a couple more in there, but these are ones I have saved. And if you don't know how to save a function, I've done tons of videos showing how to do that. So I want to get right to the meat of the matter here. So this is what's really cool about this calculator. You can take the domain of anything. For example, you could just take the domain of f of x. You could say, okay, what's the domain? And you just type it in. Check this out for a second. If you notice that all the letters are in italics, this is something really cool to know about this calculator. When it recognizes a command, the print goes from italics to standard print. So there's domain. So it's telling me it understands that I'm asking it to perform some kind of action. So I want the domain of f of x. The calculator is not smart, so you have to tell it what variable is your independent variable. So, so I want the domain of f of x, comma x, which means just means in terms of x. Hit enter, and it gives me back this domain. And if you look at f of x, that is the domain, right? It's a polynomial. It doesn't have any domain issues to it. However, if you did a composition of two functions and maybe there was a domain issue, then maybe it would look like this. So what if I wanted to do the domain of f of x over g of x? Well, then you would do that in a very similar way. You'd say, what is the domain? I'm sure this, this domain thing is in the menu somewhere. I just always type it, so if you don't do it that way, sorry. f of x over g of x. That makes you happy. Another way to do this to make sure that it, it's the way you want it is to do it this way. When you get to here, you just hit control, division, and it gives you that solidus right here. So it makes you more, I guess, more confident that you have what you wanted to have. F of x, take my down cursor right here to g of x, to g of x. This is really important if you do it this way, though, that you use your right cursor and make sure that the cursor ends up here. And then I'm going to put in, of course, again, in terms of, so comma, x in terms of x. And you hit enter. And that is, if you look at what g of x is, g of x can't equal zero because if, if it was zero, you'd have the opposite of zero squared. Zero squared is zero. The opposite of zero is zero. And you'd have zero in the denominator, and therefore you'd have an undefined function. So that actually does work. So I think that this is actually really clever. There are ways to do range also, and I'm really going to be slow to do that. So I'm not going to do that right now because I haven't tested it out. Sometimes, to be honest with you, the way I do uh, range is I set the thing equal to y, and then I ask for domain in terms of y, which would be the range, wouldn't it? So, okay, hopefully this was really helpful. Remember that what is crucial here is that you save your functions, um, that you put, put them in if you're going to use them repeatedly. Otherwise, you can just type them in. That when you type something into your calculator, that the italic print goes to standard print, and also that you put it in terms of the variable that you want to be considered. All right? So... Again, I hope it was helpful. If you have questions or comments or ways to make this better, please let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.